Hello, welcome to Finance Speaks. I'm Kyle Sadler, president of Precept Wealth Management and best-selling author of I'm Retired, Now What? I'm here today to talk to you about umbrellas. Okay, uh, really understanding the two categories of investments, but we'll get back to umbrellas in just a second. We all dream of living off our riches and assets, traveling the world, and doing the things we've always wanted to do once we retire. The only trouble is that so many of these dreams remain just that, dreams. Those who never bother to plan for their retirement often end up greatly disappointed when they realize that they have spent all of their time dreaming and no time actually putting things into place to make those dreams come true. In a video series we released discussing employer-sponsored plans, I spent some time on this same topic. However, I realized that some may not watch that video thinking it's only discussing those types of plans. Therefore, today I am just going to readdress the understanding of the two categories of investments, how they can be used, and what can be invested in. To better assist in understanding savings options, I created the umbrella analogy. The first question you ask is, why do we use umbrellas? That's correct, to cover us, to protect us. Same is with, with savings options. I use umbrellas because they are covering the assets according to the IRS and how they classify them. The first umbrella I'm going to name it investments. In the whole entire world, the universe, there are only two categories of investments. After tax money, or what we like to call in the financial world, non-qualified assets, and the other is pre-tax money, or in other words, like we refer to it as, you guessed it, qualified money. So first, let's look at investments that are non-qualified, or in other words, after-tax money. What can this money be invested in? Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, REITs, UITs, the list can go on and on. What we need to remember about this money is that it has already been taxed, so only the growth and income, i.e. dividends and interest, etc., is taxable. Next, we want to look at the second category, which would be the opposite of non-qualified, and that would be qualified assets. Well, what makes it this qualified? Who makes it qualified? IRS rules qualify these assets. These are investments like IRAs, pensions, 401ks, you get the point. What qualifies this money is that the money is pre-tax, meaning that most of the plan types invest the money before it is taxed. Within these qualified assets are what I'm going to call two subcategories. The first is called traditional, meaning that the growth is tax deferred and you only pay taxes on the money that is distributed, distributed to you. When you take those distributions, that's whenever you pay taxes. So for example, you take $5,000 out of your IRA. All 5,000 will be taxed, no matter your age, length of time it's been in the plan, or the amount you withdraw. You see, I hear a lot of misconceptions and there are no ways to get around paying taxes on traditional plans. Well then, what can you invest your money under traditional qualified plans? Let's see. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Oh yeah, the list sounds the same. You see, the majority of all money can be invested in anything. Determining whether it's qualified or non-qualified only matters whenever you're deciding which umbrella is covering it. Now, can you switch umbrellas with your money? Absolutely. If it was a qualified account, such as an IRA, and you take a distribution, which is taxable, you can now cover it under a non-qualified umbrella. And if you wanted to switch from a non-qualified umbrella to a traditional IRA, 
Simple. What you would be doing is making a contribution to your IRA and taking a tax deduction when completing your tax return. There are some limitations and rules and I'm not going to get into that in this video because this is just an educational overview. However, please verify all rules, limitations and restrictions prior to investing. Now, for the second subcategory, I'm going to have to throw a curveball at you. So, are you ready? Here it comes. Roths are considered qualified assets because they can be established on the majority of all of the plan types listed previously. Roth IRAs, Roth 401ks, Roth 403bs, you, you get the point. However, the greatest difference between Roth and traditional plans is taxes. Unlike traditional qualified assets, Roth contributions are not pre-tax. Therefore, they are taxed before they are contributed. However, the cool part is, is that this money grows tax-free and comes out tax-free if you apply all the rules. <laughs> so, now, now that we're recovering from that knee-buckling curveball, how can Roth assets be invested? Well, let's take a look. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, REITs, UITs, yet again, the list can go on and on and on. Aha, there is a common theme. The ultimate outcome is that money can be invested in anything. It's the umbrella that covers what it is to determine the taxation on it. So this is the umbrella analogy. I know, I know. I've now spawned the question you're all thinking. Which is the best place to invest your money? <laughs> Sorry, I can't answer that question. It's dependent upon your goals for this money, the length of time before you need that money, and your comfort level with investing because this is how finance speaks. I'm Kyle Sadler, headed out until next time. Be blessed and may all your days be sunny and bright.